Hi, this is Scott Garibay, and today I want to talk about Dungeons and Dragons, and I want to talk about Baldur's Gate 3. I have never seen anything like this in my entire life. So, uh, I am a, I am a Dungeons and Dragons, I'm a Hasbro Dungeons and Dragons proponent, which is really rare, right? Like, um, there are a lot of people who love Dungeons and Dragons, but not a lot of people give Hasbro any credit for, um, for you know, taking Dungeons and Dragons from 1999 to 2023 uh, and making it better every single year of their guardianship of Dungeons and Dragons. Um, yeah, even with fourth edition in there, right? And there have been a lot of, uh, there's been a lot of labor, you know, on the part of Hasbro. And I really love Hasbro. And a lot of people, and, and there is, I will tell you, 2023, I think, is a, it is a truly a new day. We are seeing, so Bob World Builder, he just did, a, um, he, I, I actually really appreciate this. I feel like um, the, ta- the tabletop role-playing game community is split into three parts. Dungeons and Dragons, Indies, and OSR. Uh, it, and, and, and that's it. That's all there is, man. Like... And they're each, you know, bringing forward and, and, you know, kind of positioning around those, um, those uh, bastions of power. And each one of those has power. You know, Dungeons and Dragons within the tabletop role-playing game community has power, right? And, and you're not wrong. I'm not saying uh, tabletop role-playing game industry. I actually have an opinion that I don't actually think the tabletop role-playing game industry exists. I, I think you could count, like... Increasingly, they 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 literally just shuttered the Paizo offices in Redmond, uh, in Redmond, um, Washington. Like it, it's serious. Like you know, I think there are a lot of people. I think there's a huge collection of vanity projects that look like an industry. Dungeons and Dragons is an industry. I don't think the tabletop role playing game industry is. I think it's a myth. I don't even think it exists. It's just like I. I could be wrong, but like, um, I saw a tweet on, uh, uh, from the Zweihander, like, Zweihander can be bought in, at Barnes and Nobles, right, like, and the guy was, like, put out a, the, you know, da- Daniel Fox put out a tweet that made me think he has, like, a day job that's not Zweihander, I was like, what, you know, but it, it is astounding, like, I really don't think we really, you know, you cannot make a living creating tabletop role-playing games, if you try to do that, the odds that you're going to bounce out um, within five to ten years with nothing but ash and tears um, is extremely high, right? Like, so it, it really is astounding. So you know, so I'm here saying, hey, Hasbro has been an amazing guardian for Dungeons and Dragons, and Dungeons and Dragons is better today because because Gary Gygax did the best he could for 12 years. Lorraine Williams did an amazing job of fixing every problem he created in the next 11 years. Um, Peter Adkinson was smart enough to buy uh, Dungeons and Dragons with the mill, with the hundreds of millions of dollars, with the, you know, either a billion that he made, or I, I'm pretty sure there was a billion involved with Magic the Gathering's um, Explo- with, you know, with the huge, with the yacht money he made out of Magic the Gathering. Peter Adkinson was a guardian for two years, right? And then, it, it went to Hasbro, and Hasbro's had it ever since, right? And so, um, you know, so I'm just, you know, a lone guy standing in the field saying, hey, pay attention, man. Like, Hasbro is the best guardian for any tabletop role-playing game in the industry and the metric, in, in the community, and the metrics prove it, right? And I want to give you an astounding metric. And, 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 and this is interesting. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you, right... I'm going to tell you a pattern that proves the numbers, right? And this is important. Like, I was uh, listening to um, Anna Akana, right? And she did a, a, I want to say it was a good video, but it wasn't because I quit in the middle, right? Like, she started this video about the submersible, right? And she said, hey, I'm going to give you, I'm going to say a whole bunch of numbers at you, right? And hold on, you know, pay attention. Just, I know this is hard. I know you don't want to listen to a a lot of numbers, right? But stay in here, right? Like, you know, and I'm like, nope, I'm out. You you convinced me. I'm going to drop out of this video because you told me I should. Like, you know, like you said I shouldn't, but all your words really were telling me I should, right? And the reality is, I think what's interesting is 
you know, scientists and data people, they can pay attention to numbers, right? But the reality is I think the rest of the world is incredibly frustrated with numbers because they're just piles of data and piles of information. There's no wisdom. There's no real knowledge there, right? And the reality is what we, what we can see in truth can be seen in patterns, not in numbers, right? So the reality is Baldur's Gate 3 is dropping and it is selling like hotcakes and it's doing extremely well, right? And I could spout a bunch of numbers at you, but what's important is the pattern, right? Here's what tells you how good Baldur's Gate 3, the video game, is, okay? There was a tweet on Twitter, you know, by some indie game maker and he said, please... I make fantasy I make fantasy video games. Please understand that Baldur's Gate 3 cannot be received as a general new standard of quality within the within the video game within the fantasy video game sphere because it's so good no um non AAA uh, game producer and even many triple A game producers will even be able to remotely match it. And this exploded into a huge conversation on um, it's exploded into a huge conversation on Twitter and people were saying Baldur's Gate 3 you cannot like you can't compare games that are going to be dropping within the next 6 to 18 months to Baldur's Gate 3 because it will make them look laughable and ridiculous as far as quality is concerned. And I was like, holy cows, wow. Well, you know, the converse, and I read, like, I had to read this in three different sources, like, to understand what they were saying. They were saying that Baldur's Gate 3 is such a massive leap forward in fantasy video game quality in what it's capable of doing and the storytelling. Like, there were, like, 400 developers who worked on this since, like, 2017. It is an astounding accomplishment, right? And its level of quality... The Dungeons and Dragons video game is so high. The quality on it is so high that the rest... That, that the video game industry, which is a very real industry, which you can actually feed your family with, right? Uh, if you work for them. Um, you... The video game industry is, uh, is saying, we cannot be... This cannot become a new um, st a new quality standard. It cannot because it's unfair and nobody's going to be able to match it. What what astounds me about that is I'm like, wow, are, are you kidding? Like, that's incredible, right? And the reason why is I don't even pay attention to this part of Dungeons and Dragons creations, right? I have a net... I don't think I... I, I don't think I've ever played a, video, a, a Dungeons and Dragons video game even once. And the reason why is, to me, uh, a Dungeons & Dragons video game is like, imagine if you sat down at a, you know, uh, at the table and someone brought you a sizzling hot steak and a baked potato with sour cream, onions, and chives, salt and pepper on all of it, and it was all perfectly cooked. You sat down and you ate it and you were, del and it was delicious, right? And then somebody, and then for your, you know, and then the next day you were like, oh man, I want to, I want to, I want that steak again, right? And they came out and they put down the best drawing you have ever seen of that meal, right? And they're like, here's your steak and your, um, your potatoes. And you're like, this is a, this is a facsimile of what I, this isn't going to do anything for me. That's what, that's what Dungeons and Dragons video games are. So the best Dungeons and Dragons video game that has ever been produced holds quite literally zero interest to me. Right? I just don't have any interest in it because it's just going to be a facsimile of the thing I love, right? And I I, I don't think it's going to fill any void, you know. I, I would much rather just spend my time preparing for reading the current, uh, you know, uh, the 40 D&D canon hardbacks I have and playing with the people I care about with, you know, the amazing players that I'm fortunate to have at my table right now and playing in a uh, video in Dungeons and Dragons games I've been invited to. So, you know, with all that said, it is, you know, it is truly astounding to me that this has happened, right? Like, and if you, you think I'm wrong, like there are literally articles, I think Polygon wrote an article on this. It was like, you know, Baldur's Gate 3 is so good 
it threatens to become a new quality standard for indie developers, indie video game developers, that know they have no chance of meeting the quality standard that's already been set by the Dungeons and Dragons video video game. And this is what I'm saying. I'm, I'm saying anything Dungeons and Dragons touches, it utterly transforms. It, it makes it, it, it reforms the thing and makes it into an incredible, um, you know, uh, it, it really makes it into this amazing, incredible property that is truly astounding. Every single word of that is my humble opinion. Have you played any of the Dungeons and Dragons video games? Why do you play them? I'm curious. What do you what do you take away from with with them? And then also, will you be playing Baldur's Gate three? And because I you know because I'm so like um, allergic to video games generally, um, I would love to hear anything you could, any information you could tell me about Dungeons and Dragons uh, Baldur's Gate three because I am interested I I am interested in anything Dungeons and Dragons. But man, do, do video games make my skin itch? Every single word of that is my humble opinion. I can't wait to hear yours. Let me know in the comments below. Please consider liking and subscribing. And have a wonderful millennium.